Okay, students. Now, what happens if I have a quadratic formula situation and the equation is not equal to zero? Well, that doesn't mean I can't make the equation equal to zero. I'm just going to have to solve an equation so that all my terms are on one side and zero is on the other side. Now, if I look here, I've got y squared and I have y on the left side, so I think I want to leave that alone. And I notice I have this 15 on the right side of my equation. Now, I think if I subtract 15 on both sides, I can get this equal to zero. So if I subtracted 15 on both sides, what I would wind up with would be 4y squared plus 4y. And keep in mind, I'm subtracting 15 on the left side, so I'll wind up with negative 15. And if I subtract on the right side, if I subtract 15 from 15, I'll get that equal to zero. See, now this equation is equal to zero. Now I can solve. Can't solve with it, it's positive, otherwise it won't work. Now, if I look, my coefficient for y squared is four, so a is equal to four. My coefficient for y is four, so b is equal to four. And the constant is equal to negative 15, so c is equal to negative 15. So now I can go through my quadratic formula, and when I substitute, I'm going to, the negative stays the same, I'm going to replace b with 4, still keep my plus minus, and still keep my square root, and now I'm going to replace b with 4, and keep the square on the outside, minus, oops, minus 4, I'm going to replace a with Four, and I'm going to replace C with negative 15 and I'm going to divide that by 2 and open my parentheses to, and replace A with 4. Now, next step. When I multiply, well, negative times 4 is negative 4. Still keep my plus minus, still keep my square root. Four times four, four times four, four squared, is 16. And I'm gonna have negative four times four is negative 16. Negative 16 times negative 15 is positive 240. I believe it's 240. And two times four in my denominator is eight. Now, when I, now the next step is I'm going to add, and when I add, let's bring another fraction in here. I'm going to add what's inside the square roots in my numerator. So negative 4 is going to stay the same. I'm going to add and subtract the square root of 16 plus 240 is 256. And and the denominator 8 is just going to stay the same. Now it's time to find the square root of everything. So when I'm finding the square root, the negative 4 is going to stay the same. The plus, or mi plus and minus is going to stay the same. The square root of 256 is 16 divided by 8. Now it's time to split my equation in half. So let's create two fractions now. And when I split, I, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have negative 4 plus 16 divided by 8. And you know what? That negative 4 doesn't look very negative. There we go. And then negative 4, since I added 16 the first time, now I'm going to subtract 16 divided by 8. Now I'm going to add each fraction separately. Let's scroll this down just a little bit. There we go. And there we go. Okay, I have four, negative 4 plus 16, that's 12, divided by 8. And I have negative 4 minus 16 is negative 20, divided by 8. And the next step is to divide. I can't really get a whole number here, 
but I can simplify this fraction a little bit. I could divide 4 into 12 and 8. I know 4 divided by 12 is 3, and 4 divided by 8 is 2. And here, it looks like the same. It looks like I divide 4 into negative 20, I get negative 5, and I can get 4 divided by 8, and I get 2. So it looks like my intercepts would be 3 over 2 and negative 5 over 2.